Welcome to the Organizational Transformation Kung Fu Podcast with your hosts, Sandy Varekia and Jennifer Long. Welcome to Organizational Transformation Kung Fu, the podcast that helps leaders understand where they are today and, and what gives them some tips and tricks on what they can do differently to help lead. Um, I'm here today with my friend Jen Long from Denver, Colorado from Management Possible. Hello, Sandy. Hey, Jen. And I'm Sandy Varekia from Satori Consulting in Toronto. And Jen and I have been podcasting for a couple of years now. And when we started thinking about you know, what we would like to talk about today, we go back to the fundamental principle of organizational Kung Fu, which is it takes time and practice in order for change to take root. And so we really started thinking, but what could we talk about today? And we came up with uh, leading in stressful times. So how are leaders coping with the stress that's happening in today's environment? And what are some of the tips and tricks that, that you might as leaders take back to your organizations or just for your own personal self-care? So we are going to talk about leading in stressful times. We're going to talk about the stress because all the coaching sessions lately are, oh my God, I don't have time. It's all so hard. How did this happen? I thought this would be over. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. As I, we're just going back. So in Canada versus the US, don't know where you are, but uh, at my mother's place of residence, we're back to masks again. So oh, back to masks. Yeah, back yes. to masks, back to flus, back to vaccines, back uh, to six feet, back to... <laughs> yes, yeah. So it, it's it's really tough on, on on society and organizations are really feeling it. Yeah. Yeah, unless unless you are just naturally super agile and can stand in that and be like, yeah, no problem. I think over time, this is the wearing, the weariness mm-hmm. of, um, and so the words I'm hearing frequently, um, especially this time of year, right? We're coming up on a year end for a lot of, you know, the fiscal yes. year end, and there's a lot of pressure, a downward pressure to wrap things up, close things, you know, get ready for next year. So there's a lot of downward pressure to to uh, perform, to, to do it all in the midst of a giant tsunami of things that are happening to leaders externally, right? And so we, we sort of started as a, as a pregame, just making mm-hmm. a list. And it's, a, it's amazing how long it is, right? It's, it's overwhelming, really, when you think about it. Because all this stuff is swirling around us at the same time. Yes, yes, it's it is exhausting, and I think that uh, we're all feeling it in an, in an interesting way. Um, so yeah, so yeah, what is some of the stuff we came up with? It was it was right. Obviously, the the remote work is still happening. Yes, struggling, yeah. and we talked about this in our last podcast. The hybrid thing is still a thing, and mm-hmm. still a hard strategy to navigate with uh, putting that up against the. DEI, the equity. How do you how do you do? Yeah, communication at the same time. Right. Yeah. How do we communicate in this new environment and the stress that it's bringing? And the I'm finding even more so the the sight unseen. Like, what's my colleague doing? Because I can't see them. Therefore, I, I feel I feel I don't know about you. I feel some trust is eroding in on some teams. Right. The trust is eroding, and we talked about well, so. Uh, Sandy was just in, in Dallas talking to a group of people, you know, about what is, what, how do we, how do we manage people who are remote and and this whole (laughs) technical thing that's creeping into companies where they're, they're tethering you to your, your keyboards and your laptops to monitor your movements. And, Mm -hmm. you know, from where I'm sitting, I'm like, how's that different than your boss kind of just breathing down your neck, standing behind you? Oh, I know. I, actually, I don't know. Did you ever watch Laverne and Shirley? This is just an out thing. Let's date ourselves. Yeah, okay, date ourselves. There was an episode in which um, one of them, I don't know who, was on the, on the line. I think they, they bottled beer or something and her yeah. manager was behind her. And right, yeah. we wouldn't do that today. We wouldn't sit there and, and breathe down somebody's neck. Yet it's no. okay to... To have a keystroke, so sorry for dating you as well as myself. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's that kind of intensity, right? And I'm, yeah. I imagine if you're in that environment, that that adds that adds pressure. Like mm-hmm. they know what I'm, they know they're monitoring my movements, which is kind of um, a little big brother from for my taste. Right. So what's the stress on that though? 
what the stress is, uh, how do I, I, I'm, I'm not only working and, and, and under pressure to work, but I'm now under pressure to constantly think, what am I doing that's going to make it look like I'm doing more? Right. right? Yeah. It's like being in a fishbowl. Like, yeah. what, how am I sitting? What is, you know, you're I like the, the energy that's expanded, the additional yeah. energy that you're expanding just probably on a subconscious level mm-hmm. um, is, is probably adding to the exhaustion. Right. Totally. So you got that going on. There's, there's COVID. We talked about that. Um, mm-hmm. Retention Inflation. for a lot of folks is an issue, right? Because no one wants to put up with this. <laughs> Yes. Quitting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So as leaders, they're, they're getting the pressure to monitor, uh, work with people at a distance, but at the same time, how do you hold these people that you've now put this pressure on that you've now created this disparity and who gets to work from home and who doesn't, Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's its own little it's its own little thing. Inflation, yeah. right? <laughs> right? We're coming up to Christmas. Mm-hmm. People yep. are feeling the, the added pressure of the cost of food and, and all that sort of stuff. So now we've got stress of having to work harder and you know, filling double jobs because people aren't uh, are leaving right, left and center. And then we've got, uh, we've got to buy Christmas presents and how do we afford things? And Right. We left for that new job, got that raise, and now everything's more expensive. So it feels the same. It does. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. So I'm that's, sorry. that's a lot. Uh, I mean, qu- year end earnings, right? Quarter, closing the quarter. So I'm empathetic, right? And, hmm. and thinking about now that we've painted this really dire, stressful, <laughs> as we're talking about it, it's stressing me out. <laughs> thinking about all these things yeah so let's talk about what are the things you can do what are the things to cope what are the things that are going to help you lead more effectively efficiently um in this environment to help not just the people that you're leading but also to help yourself because if you're showing up a hot mess in your own, your own universe. How's that really translating to what kind of energy you have to hold for others? And and can you even be inspiring when you're faced with the craziness? And we didn't even mention whatever the nature of a leader's work is, right? We didn't even talk for about sure. the actual work pressures, deadlines, and outputs that are on top of yeah. all the rest of this. Yeah. You know, and, and what you just said was so incredibly important, Jen, because I think as leaders, sometimes people feel that they have to be above, right? So there's a a hot mess of stuff that's going on in their employees and they have to manage that. And Mm -hmm. then they have to show up in such a way that all of this hot mess is actually affecting them as well. Nobody sees it. And so, right. Right. right? So managing how to handle it. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Right. So that, 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 you know, you're, you're human too. Philosophy needs to come into it. Right. And, and how do you manage everyone else and yourself and your families and, Yeah. Yeah. And we talked, we talked about the whole sandwich generation, right? The age of the leader Mm. and the things that, that people who are in these positions are dealing with, not just from the work perspective, but I mean, all the people they're taking care of, right? That's right. I think I read a stat that, um, I don't know, huge amount. I can't remember what it was. Uh, It was very high of uh, the sandwich generation or leaders today because of the age uh, 45 to 64. Right. Right. And so we're all in it. You know, you and I are in it. We have adult children, but we also have parents that we're caring for um, a lot. And so I think that one of the things I read was the average person like us spends an extra 19 hours a week caregiving. Yeah. Right. That's a lot of time. time Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there's just so much coming at everybody. So what are the things that, that people, that people can do to, to help? How can we help you out? Let's talk about the things we can do to help you out to deal with your stress. So first of all, stress. Let's just talk about Mm -hmm. the word stress. Define that for yourself because there's stress that is um, distress, which is like pain, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then there's stress, which is the kind of um, pressure, right? And um, uh, I don't know another word to, to... to put out there. Um, 
that that comes in that you put on yourself as well as perceive others, right? So there's mm-hmm. a there's a perception around it. And there's also the kind of stress that um, is uh, where you, uh, what's, who, who is the Superman lady, Amy Cuddy? Is it the, the, the kind where you're, you're getting ready, right? Where your body is acknowledging you're going into something, right? right. Yeah. And there's a school of thought around stress, right? That if you think of stress as destructive, as bad for you, then it is. Mm-hmm. Whereas mm-hmm. if you think as stress as your body responding to having to be in a situation and um, your, your profile, your, your, <laughs> she talks about your profile, your arteries either constrict if you think it's bad or they widen to create more blood flow while you handle what you're doing under stress. So right. I say all of that to say that it's important how you think about and define stress. Yes. Yes. I was, uh, I read just the other day, something that said something along the lines of what you focus on, you become. And so yeah. if your if your stress is the negative stress that, that you're manifesting, then it will, t- it will consume you. It will take, it will take over. So it's really important to understand the different types of pressures that you're under, the different types of stressors and name them and kind of sort them out, right? Write them down, right? Like what is, yeah, what is actually like, the impact? Write your list, right? And mm-hmm. what was the technique that you were talking about earlier on how to see it? Yeah, the circle of control. So you you write down on a piece of paper what the, the change you're going through, the biggest change or the thing that's stressing you out the most. And then you write down things that worry about what, what keeps you awake at night. And then you do a circle. And in the middle of the circle, you write things with, uh, in the middle of it, things that you can control about this issue and outside of the circle of the things that you cannot control. And you just focus on the things within the circle. And you find typically that the things outside the circle are the most things that stress you out because they are uncontrollable. But it, it allows you to really be intellectual about stress, right? And, well, um, and, the, and the naming, right? The naming in and of itself. Yeah is, and you know, I'm I'm an ownership girl. Mm -hmm. When you can name the thing, you can own the thing instead of it owning you, right? Yes. And it gives you agency to say, look, these are the things as I see them. These are the things that are impacting me. These are the things that I see I have some control over. These are the things that I can see that I don't. So I can start to really parse, where do I want to spend my energy to, to mitigate? What am I doing to cope with the things that are impacting me? And how effectively am I doing that? Right. Because otherwise, without the naming and without the, I, th- I love the fact that you, you write it down and you see mm-hmm. it and you put it in concentric circles so you can see mm-hmm. how far away things are and how, how close they are, really gives you a sense of um, how to look at it and, and, am I coping? Maybe there are things in there that you hadn't considered that you're like, Oh, if I just did that, then these three things would go away. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And what I like about this from a leadership perspective, because we're kind of thinking about as a leader, how can you cope? And then how, so we do that as a leader, but sitting down with your employees, because, you know, I think one of the things that you said at the outset is there's not enough time. So when I, t- I was just doing um, team coaching earlier this week in Saskatoon and what I heard so much was there's not enough time. We're overworked. You know, we, there's too much work to get through. And so doing an exercise like that with your staff to help mm-hmm. them understand where the true stress is coming from. And so do it for yourself, but do it as an exercise with your staff. Exactly. Right? Leads to empathy as well, right? Listening. Right. Well, and then you can see, you know, if that's something you're doing as a team, right? So the team exercises of the vulnerability and, and creating connection as a, tr- as a team, mm-hmm. like know the people who are your teammates and to sit down and, and share with people like, yeah, here's all the things going on for me, right. It helps people understand all the things you're actually managing. It's, you know, uh, and, helpful, right. And it's you're helpful. not on an yeah. Island, <laughs> right. Because right? everybody else has a whole lot of shit on that thing as well. Right. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. 
So yeah. that was one so, tip that I think is a, a great one. It, yeah, it is. So then you get into like, what, what are the mitigations, right? What is <laughs> what is the mitigation you need to to get into? And and sometimes simply there are things on that list that you just need to stop worrying about, stop doing, stop and in, stop investing in, right? What are those? Those are the ease. That's the low hanging fruit action. Mm-hmm. What are the things that you're doing because you've been doing them, but they are not adding value? And if you stop, the consequences of that are are minimal. Minimal, absolutely, right? Because like yeah. those of us who suffer from overcommitment or um, trying to t- trying to own a lot or, or take over things, it's like why why am I doing all of these things and trying to be all of these things to all of these people or whatever that might be? Mm-hmm. And that's a, an easy way to just look at okay. I can stop this for a while. Not forever, right? It's not for everything. It's a no, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Right. Okay. Another, um, the, some of the obvious stuff that people think is a little bit woo woo. Learn how to breathe. Yes. <laughs> you know, tried and true though, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> tried and true. I don't know how many, times I myself personally, I mean, it, it went keyed up and I have to remind myself to breathe. And it, it it's amazing what it does to your brain mm-hmm. and your body um, mm-hmm. to stop. I, I read the most fascinating book by a guy named James Nestor called Breath. And he does this very cool deep dive on breathing and what it does for you and kind of the history of breath work. And uh, he had a, probably an interest in this because he did a whole series on those people that do deep dives, right? They hold their breath for a long period mm-hmm. of time and go really far down and then come back. And so it started there for him, but th- just the, the, the structure of your, your nasal cavities and the things that are going, I mean, it was like all the science, all the meta, physical, all the things that we've thought about over time. And he really kind of goes into it. And it was a page turner of a book, I have to tell you. But okay. it, the whole time you're reading it, you're conscious of how you're breathing, <laughs> which he talks about the danger of mouth breathing, right? And, mm. and you know, I, that's always one of my my insults to people is when I call them a mouth breather. <laughs> what is the matter with you? But the, the, <laughs> how many people actually breathe through their mouth and how unhealthy that is and breathing through the nose and just how you can change that alkaline in your body in a very, very short period of time. And so I also equate breath work to the shift of the neurochemistry, which goes back to the whole, how do you, when you're in tension, you're sort of in that fight or uh, freeze, right. appease mind, mm-hmm. right? Or amygdala thing of of fear and tension that you're when you breathe and how you think when you breathe and the things the the meditative language that you use when you breathe, right? Listen to the sound of your breath. Listen to the that whole right. thing shifts your neurochemistry. Five minutes. That's right. Two minutes. Right. These are parts of the day where maybe before a meeting, right. You see people do this before they go on stage, before they, you know, it's, it's a tried and true thing. And I want to, I want to bring that back into the office. It's simple, simple, simple. Right. Yeah. Stretching. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. I, I would say most people are very shallow breathers. And, and I think in the stress of, of the day, you, it's just, you just need to get through the day. So taking that time to just take a few really deep, deep breaths, shut mm-hmm. your eyes, right? Mm-hmm. It just refocuses and, and level sets your brain again, I think, to start again. Yes. And, and you know, thank you to the app stores and the mm-hmm. all that. There, there are meditation apps, right? Do you, everybody's like, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time. And so time is a choice. Time is yes. a choice. We all have the same amount of time. How are you choosing to use it? If you choose to book yourself back to back to back to back and you don't give yourself the break, whose fault is that, right? Mm -hmm. If you're getting booked into meetings that are back to back to back, take the five minutes, show up five minutes late, breathe, be present in the meeting. And so part of what might feel counterintuitive is when you know you're going into the next thing, be present. Mm -hmm. I think part of the stress is that we hold the thinking and the 
planning and all of the noise from the previous meeting in the meeting we go into next. And then we start focusing on the next meeting while we're in the meeting and our mind never really gets to, to reflect, to make note to. So there's a a discipline of really just how do I fully attend? If I'm going to be in something, be in it. Mm -hmm. And how do I get a discipline of stopping this meeting, put it down and then be in the next one? Yes. Which is not easy, right? You make it sound very simple, yeah. but it it is not easy. It it, it truly is a discipline. It it, it is a forced behavior that -hmm. you really need to think about yourself and your actions and being able to let go. Mm -hmm. One of the things you just said also made me think that um, stress often leads to inability to sleep. And you may not have time to meditate per se during the day, but at nighttime, what a great time to kind of let go of your day and relax mm-hmm. your mind and your body in order to get a better sleep so that you are re-energized for the next day so that you can give your all the next day. Because it's a perpetual yeah. cycle, right, of stress and, and tiredness Yeah, that we're, you know, many times we're just not giving our, our best self. Well, yeah. And, and be kind. I mean, you know, a lot of us are in that, ah, oh, it's such a crazy day. I'm just going to, I'm going to kick back and have a glass of wine or I'm going to kick back and have a beer or a Mm -hmm. glass of bourbon, which is my go-to. And that doesn't help your sleep. That really doesn't help your sleep. So be mindful of that as well. I mean, you know, I don't want to be, I'm not not your mom. I'm not your doctor, but (laughs) we all know. I like my wine. So no, (laughs) I like my wine and I like my bourbon. So, but you know, if, if that seems to be getting in the way, sure. Yeah. Try yes. the meditation, like you know. Let's balance that out. Try, yes. try breathing and 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 tuning down because the good night's sleep and the eating well and all of that stuff that you all know helps deal with the stuff. And so, if you're not being kind and you're just like cutting loose and just thinking that's the answer, um, maybe that's the counterintuitive thing. It's just behave, behave, yeah. and sleep and, For and sure. hours and meditations instead of yeah. Wine. I would agree. <laughs> Think what else? One of the things I did before we jumped on this podcast is I have a list of 13 things on my to-do list. Oh. And I highlighted the uh, three things that I need to do this weekend and in yellow. Yes. And the th- three things that I need to start on Monday in blue. And so it's yeah. what, you know, writing lists, prioritizing and not tr- try to focus your energy on things that you need to tick off and get off. Um, Rather than having like 13 things ratting around your brain going, oh, should I do this? Should I do that? Should I do this? Should I do that? So that's very helpful, right? Prioritizing, yeah. writing lists, yeah. thinking about structuring your day. What's it yeah. going to look like on Monday when you go back to the office? Yeah. Zoom out of your head. Zoom out of your head and go, what are all the things that are that are floating around in there, that dis-ease that you're having, that you're feeling uncomfortable? Write it down. List it out. What am I looking at? What's really the most important thing? What's going to make the biggest difference? Right. Mm-hmm. Do the hard things first. Do it this like a, you know, not just on your weekends, but what's your day, what's your, how you're setting your days up. Yeah, how are you absolutely. really structuring your week? Um, yeah. So that you don't feel like you're taken, you're taken by what's happening in the business and you're taken by that you feel like you're actually making conscious decisions about how you want to show up, attend, pay attention to. And it's not managing time. It's managing attention. Mm-hmm. What are you paying attention to? What matters and making decisions on that, not on how you spend your time because time is, feels constrained. Yes. It is a constraint. Is yeah. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. And structuring it so that you do have the, the ability to get some of these things done because you're, you're absolutely right. Your day gets consumed by others. Um, and you know, shut your door, Right. A little sign up. I, I notice in banks here anyway, there's all sorts of signs that are going up having lunch and which would never have happened, you know, pre COVID, but you know, <laughs> on a phone call, um, but you know, claim your space and your time and um, be a little, dare I say, selfish with your time though, by mm-hmm. putting some boundaries around it so that you mm-hmm. can get to the things that you have prioritized and so that you don't get consumed by all the other stuff in the day. Yeah. Yeah. And it's okay to have the conversation, right? If there are things Mm -hmm. in your way that you really feel are 
um, an anchor that keep you, that you don't feel you're going to be able to mitigate, that you don't feel like where, where is the thing that you have to have the hard conversation to say, I need distance from this Mm -hmm. because that there may be some things that you need distance from because there are no, none of these strategies are going to apply. Right. So understand what that is and don't be afraid to do that as well. I think that's, Mm -hmm. that's Mm -hmm. important. Um, the other thing is, oh, how are you connecting, right? So claim your space, but at the same time, what are the other things you're doing to connect yes. to people? Because we are, we are, we are pack animal. We are We're social beings. We are social. Yeah. We are all of those things. And so if you are too isolated, too remote, too disconnected, and this has nothing to do with introvert or extrovert, nothing. this is just connecting to people in your circle. Mm -hmm. Who are the people who lift you up? Who are the people who make you laugh? Because laughter, right? Yes. (laughs) All high on my list is if I can't get with my people and laugh, am I watching some stand up comedy? Because yes, (laughs) yes. That marvelous Mrs. Maisel. (laughs) Am I watching comedy? Am I investing in where is the humor? Because if you can't find the humor, you. You are. Yes. Oh, there's so much written about laughter. I remember years ago, I did a seminar on laughter and it was all about belly laugh and and that sort of stuff. It was so much fun. But again, right, much like breathing, Mm -hmm. laughter, you Mm -hmm. know, secretes all this, you know, all that. All the good hormones, all the dopamine and all the serotonin. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So not only are we more isolated work-wise, just in general because of post-pandemic and and how we're working these days. Um, But it's harder to have a really good, robust, funny conversation over Zoom. It it, it is more difficult, right? So you really have to really think about what that looks like and how do you connect with people and and just have fun in your day. Like nothing has to be so heavy all the time. Right. Right. Yeah. And if you, so you know, and notice when is the last time you really did that? When was the last time you got together with somebody and really had a fun time? Mm-hmm. Um, because if it's been a while, those are the things, those are the things. And and if you find you're in that uh, more consistent level of depression and struggle, are you getting help? Yes. Right. There are lots of online solutions these days that mm-hmm. are low cost and easy to get to mental health support. Yes. And yeah. that is not a taboo. That is not a taboo. And if you aren't in, t- you know, you've, you've gone down this list and you're like, yeah, yeah, Jensen, yeah, I've tried that. Yeah, not yeah, working. Done that, done that, tried yeah, that. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to get, get real, get therapeutic help because yes. there's, there's no reason to, to continue to no. struggle. Call your EAP provider tomorrow on Monday, whenever you get back to work. Right. It's, um, it's important. Hundred percent. Right? It's important to recognize, and so like, do go through these things, and and maybe that's kind of that litmus test of like, yeah, I've, I've done that, I've done that, I've done that doesn't work. Maybe it is time, right? So yeah. just be aware. Yeah, and, and I think leaders need to be aware of the apathy and the signals of people who are disconnected, right? Mm-hmm. Who who have who the remoteness, who never have the cameras on, who don't who don't show up in the way that they used to show up and and what that is. And um, I think also from a leadership standpoint, it's not necessarily your job to solve these things for people Mm -hmm. as much as it is just your level of awareness of your own, right? With your own ability to identify your, how you're showing up and is that bleeding into your staff Mm -hmm. and your team and have you got a handle on you so that if you've got a handle on you, you're going to be able to have a handle on your team yeah. a little bit better. And if you see something, say something, reach out, connect to somebody on your team that you think are you're concerned about, right? Yeah. It's, it's just about being seen. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. So there's a few things I think that, you know, that can help lead during this, you know, tremendous time of stress that everybody's under right now. There's just so much coming at us. Um, so awareness and empathy will go a long way. You know, yes. Being in tune with your own body, seeing, thinking about others and, and from maybe from a less from a, 
a work standpoint all the time, but maybe as you said, Jen, like, are they showing up differently than they did, you know, pre work from home or pre whatever that might be? Is there something shifting that we need to be aware of? And I think really good leaders really lean into that. And it's about the work. Yes, but it's about the person even more so. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, if you're tethered to your computers, have, have conversations about that because I do, I'm very trust. Trust is way more important, way more nourish, mm-hmm. nourishing, way more meaningful from a work perspective. And if you're struggling with not seeing your team and you're struggling with how to handle that remoteness, really um, focus on what's coming out. What are the outputs and how are you really growing the level of trust with your team? Because it seems counterintuitive to let go. Mm-hmm. And I think instead of trying to hold in and hold on that really what you need to do is learn to let go, yeah. learn to let people show up and have the integrity around the work. Yeah. Um, trust first, right? 100%. 100% because I think that letting go is also the letting go of all the stress of the questioning and the mm-hmm. worrying and all of the mm-hmm. stuff that goes with it. Yeah. Are they, are they actually working? Probably. Probably. And I think people yeah. are probably working more. Yes. Right? I saw this t-shirt in a catalog. I laughed so hard. Am I working remotely or living at work? <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Whoa. It's hard to tell. <laughs> it is because there's no line. There's no boundaries. Oh, no. I love having an office to go to. I have to say about Yes. It makes it it makes it a little more clear cut. A little more clear cut, a little more clear boundary. Mm-hmm. So that's mm-hmm. good. Exactly. Put your put your home office with a door in a in distance if you can possibly that's do right. it. Yes. Exactly. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Well, so hopefully this has been a little bit helpful for all y'all to get kind of a list of how to how to deal with this this stuff going on. It's not going away. And hey, if you're if you're own if you're owed some PTO, take it. Yeah take it absolutely yeah awesome well thanks jen that was a that was great i as always as always you exactly this whole love connecting to sandy gets me excited (laughs) i love doing it i'm all energized i feel better excellent all right well hopefully yeah get leave your comments we'd love to hear from you and if there's something that you'd like to hear us talk about let us know absolutely all right well until next time Thank you for listening and please visit Sandy's website at satoriconsultinginc.ca. That's S-A-T-O-R-I consultinginc.ca and Jen's website at managementpossible.com. Thanks again.